So we're with uh, Ian Percy and Andrew Bart Simpson, who are the uh, Scandia star crew. And you're leaving Miami at the end of the World Championships with not the result you would have wanted. But how do you feel your game is in terms of the speed and the way you're sailing? Yeah, I mean, I probably gauge more from all the training before where you do a lot of smaller fleet racing. And we were going well, but, you know, this, this, the World Championships and both fleets like the Bacardi Cup are all about making big strategic decisions correct. When you get it wrong, you're coming 60th regardless how fast you are. We got a lot wrong this week. But I think speed-wise and, and the way we're kind of still handling the, the, the mistakes, I think we're looking good for China still. Right. But looking at this class over the last two Olympic cycles, after Sydney there was a rush of new blood coming into the class, and then after Athens, another rush of, of which you were one. So there were world title holders, Olympic medalists, gold medalists coming into the class. I mean, just how competitive is the star fleet now? I think it's very tough. I mean, of all... Of there's probably six or seven boats that each all have Olympic medals and world titles, and, and those, those are the boats that normally do come through at the end of the week, and uh, that quality shows. But there's a lot of them, and that's the difference, I think, with some of the other classes where there's one or two guy who stands out. Um, in this class, in this class, is six or seven. All have got been on the podium, the Olympics, won world titles, and are very confident leading races and not going to make mistakes. Because there is this point of view that says the star is. Well, it's a boat that's designed in 1910, 1911, and shouldn't really have a place in, in the modern Olympics. But for you guys, this must be probably the ultimate Olympic keelboat? I think, yeah, I think within the, the sailors themselves, because everyone has their guys from the nation that they look up to, and, and if you're Polish, you know that Mateusz and Dominik are, are so good that you see the star as, as quite an uh, important class to, to all the sailors themselves. I mean, you're right, the boat is old design. And, uh, but at the same time, it's not about how fast you go. To, if you're going five knots or 55 knots, it's all about the racing and it's about the quality of the people you're up against. And for that, the stars got nothing to compete with it. And Bart, like Ian, you've come out of the fin class and before that, the laser class, which really means you've been sailing against and trying to beat Ian and, and Ben Ainsley. But you've been reserved for the last two games, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's true, yeah. And now you're going to China, you are sailing for a medal, does that, um, well, how does that feel? No, it's brilliant, I mean, it's great to sail with Ian, because he's such a good sailor, and, you know, I trained with Ian for 2000, and Ian won, and it was a really good kind of set-up, and it worked really well, and obviously they did the same with Ben in 2004, and obviously he won, so it was good, because we pushed them on, and hopefully we can find a training partner to push us on, so we can do the same again. So you made these guys look better, did you? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. They look pretty good anyway. So, but the, the crucial thing is you've been to the games twice. So, I mean, what is different about the aura of the Olympic Games compared with a, a normal World Championship? What experience have you now got in the bank that you can take to China? I think, say, you know, all the talking with Ben and Ian and all your friends that have been, and um, especially being there in 2000 was really good experience. So, I guess you're not. The key is not to be overawed for the Olympics itself, and um, we just really excited about going and getting on with it. Uh, and the two of you have been sailing together in the America's Cup, uh, I guess, what, 2003 to about 2007-ish? Yeah. Give yeah. or take. I mean, that was time away from the Olympic classes. And when you got together, which is now 16, 17 months ago, did you feel there was a lot of catching up to do relative to the, the other guys in the star class? I think the, the biggest issue was trying to get me to learn to crew a boat because I haven't done that much of jumping over the side of these boats so it's all a bit different but hopefully we're there now and we can really focus on fine-tuning for China. But did that America's Cup experience help the, the commu communication, the dialogue? You'd actually practice that before you got into this two-man boat? A lot of it you do but it is different in these kind of boats because you know the helm has got this, this stick at the end of the day and they and it's a slightly different chemistry to the cup boat but that's the way it should be in, in these small boats but we definitely did a lot of practice and it has helped overall, yes. Uh, and Ian, I guess in China there will be a fleet of 15 boats, is that right? Yeah. I mean, how many of those would you count as medal contenders? I mean, how many oh, other crews do you ten, have to 12, beat? 10 or 12 could get medals for sure and probably six could win, is the way I see it. So there's a lot of people who are in the hunt. Um, it's, it's, it's a very different style of racing than we've had over this winter. It's much more about 
little tactical decisions rather than big strategic decisions. So um, it's going to throw different people into it that maybe haven't been going so well over the winter, and I think it does open it up. But yeah, there's probably 12, 13 of the 15 who can end up with a medal. I mean, it's there's no one really who hasn't got real quality out of everyone who's there. It's just probably, I would say, there's only really six or so teams that are, are likely to top it. Right. Well, Ian Percy, Andrew Simpson, we wish you well. Cheers. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. guys.